Okay, guys, this question is uh, question number two of AP Physics C Mechanics 2024 Solution Set 2 actual exam. Uh, let's read this one out. A uh, student drops a sphere of mass m from rest and the air exists drag force of magnitude of drag on the sphere as shown in the figure. This remodels of the magnitude of the drag, drag force of dv where v is the speed of the sphere and v is a constant, positive constant. Derive but do not solve a differential equation that could be used to Define the speed as a function of time. Enter your answer in the given physical quantities and the physical constant. Physical constant. So how will the FBD look like? Obviously, one force is the F drag, which we can clearly see over here, and one is the mg. Uh, mass is m. Yeah. So mg. So what is the net force acting on the on the sphere? It will be obviously the downward force minus upward force because. Uh, it's falling down, so downward force should be written first. Uh, then F net, what is F net by the way? F is MA, right? F is MA, so that will be equal to MG minus BV. Um, dividing both sides with uh, M, we will get the value of the acceleration as uh, uh, G minus BV over M. And finally, since we need a differential equation, uh, which should relate velocity and time, we can replace acceleration with dv over dt. So finally, our answer is going to be dv over dt will be equal to g minus bv over m. So this is the differential equation, and it relates velocity and time. Obviously, g, b, and m are constants. So we don't have to worry about it. So that should be our final answer. Uh, the next one talks about uh, a student sketches a drag force, the drag force exerted uh, as a function of time. Draw a vertical line on this sketch to indicate the earliest time when the drag force becomes equal to the weight, uh, which occurs when the sphere reaches the terminal speed. Uh, label this time as TT uh, on the time axis. So uh, obviously it makes sense that uh, uh, when they become equal, in fact, they have already mentioned that which occurs when the sphere reaches the terminal speed. Uh, the terminal speed is when uh, 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 terminal speed is when the speed becomes constant, so all the acceleration becomes zero, right? Uh, so they that's what they want, right? They want the drag force to be equal to the weight of the sphere, uh, the earliest time when this happens. So <clears throat> this should be the time when the drag force now becomes constant. And at this point, the F drag is equal to the F weight uh, uh, because the drag force is no longer increasing. Uh, we, we know that the drag force is dependent on velocity. If the drag force is no longer increasing, obviously the velocity is no longer increasing. So velocity has reached the terminal point. Uh, and this is the starting of that, uh, of, that, uh, of that thing, the earliest time when the drag force and weight are equal. So these two are equal when it starts from here. Uh, what do we have to indicate? Uh, TT on the, okay, so I have to write that this is T sub T, okay. Justify the location of TT, explicitly reference appropriate features of the sketch. So we already mentioned that, but I can definitely write mathematically that F drag, when it is equal to F weight, this would mean that the acceleration of the, uh, of the system will become zero, which means that the velocity will become constant and the constant velocity is nothing but the terminal velocity. Terminal velocity. Uh, we can clearly see that um, at that point, the curve flattens. Here the curve flattens, which means that uh, F drag is constant. F drag is constant. And what is F drag? F drag is BV. So BV is constant b is anyway a constant so this would mean that v is also a constant so yeah that's what justifies that this is where the velocity is constant and it reaches the terminal speed so that would be the justification i hope that makes sense uh, the next question is uh, suppose the student throws the same sphere downward with a zero non uh, with a sorry with a non zero initial speed the magnitude of the new drag force of the terminal speech after being thrown down is f nu now indicate whether f nu would be greater than, less than, or equal to the magnitude of f drag at the terminal speed, by the way, the terminal speed uh, in the figure two. Okay, let's think about it. 
So, uh, what is the formula for the F drag, by the way, uh, as an uh, F drag and uh, at the terminal point, F drag is equal to F weight, right? So, we know that BV is equal to MG. So, B is MG over B. Now, it doesn't matter whether we throw it down with some speed or release it from rest. The terminal speed, this is terminal speed, by the way, the terminal speed will still be same because the mass is not changing. B is a constant, G is a constant. So, the terminal speed is still the same. So, if the terminal speed is same, obviously, it will make sense that F nu, which is only dependent on V, it is also same. So, they should be equal. There is no change whatsoever. Uh, the next thing talks about the student conducts an experiment to better understand the relationship between F drag and V. The student makes measurement to calculate and graph the magnitude of F drag as a function of uh, V. Draw the line of best fit. All right. So let me draw that uh, line of best fit. It's going to look something like, or maybe that point is B. So. Yeah, I mean, this looks okay. Maybe it should pass from here. Okay, this looks a little better. Maybe this one. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with that. So this is uh, looking a little better. So this is a line of best fit. Um, what do they need next? Use the line of best fit to calculate B. Uh, so first off, we need to find a relationship between F drag and V. And that's pretty straightforward, right? Because F drag is nothing but BV. So that's y is equal to mx. So essentially, the slope is going to be the value of b. That's not going to change. So we just have to find the slope. Uh, what is the slope? Let's take any two points, any two uh, grid intersection points to be more specific. Let's take one point as this and uh, another point as this one, I think. That makes sense. So this point is uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So the y coordinate over here is 9. And here the x coordinate is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So that's 11. So the first point is uh, x coordinate is 11. And the y coordinate is, I believe, 9. And here the x coordinate is 6, sorry, y coordinate is 16. And the x coordinate is 21. So that's 21, comma 16. So the slope, which is also equal to b, is going to be y2 minus y1, 16 minus 7, uh, 16 minus 9 is 7, over x2 minus x1, which is, I believe, 8. Sorry, it's going to be 9, right? Uh, sorry, <laughs> what am I doing? It's going to be 10. So b is going to be 0 0.7. That will be the value of b using the line of the best fit. Obviously, your answer can deviate a little bit, but don't worry about it. They allow a little bit of uh, margin over here. Uh, the last question, I think, uh, for this uh, question number two talks about uh, student claims that the terminal speed is dependent on the diameter of the sphere and a student design experiment to collect whether this is true or not. Da, da, da. Uh, so he has the following uh, equipment. So he can measure the spheres of the same known mass with different known diameters. The diameter is changing. Now the same diameter mass is changing and the velocity is changing. So what two quantities should he measure? It makes sense that if he's interested to know whether diameter changes the velocity or not, there is no point of changing the masses because uh, that's not what he is even talking about. Now the question is whether diameter should go on horizontal or vertical axis. Remember that the dependent independent variable goes on the horizontal axis and this is independent, right? This is in our control. We are changing the diameter. So the diameter goes over on the um, right side and the velocity comes over on the left side, so the vertical axis. Uh, describe, bri uh, describe briefly how the quantities uh, graph could be used to determine the relationship between sphere. Uh, quantities graph could be used to determine. Well, it depends on the graph. So, for example, there can be only three scenarios, right? Either the graph can be increasing in nature or the graph can be decreasing in nature or the graph is constant. Uh, constant as in a horizontal line or almost like a horizontal line because that's an experiment. Uh, if these two things happen, then definitely they are dependent on each other or to be more specific, velocity is dependent, velocity is dependent on uh, diameter. 
But if something like this happens, that the velocity versus diameter curve comes out to be a horizontal line, then obviously the velocity is going to be independent of it. This is how we can use the curve to uh, interpret. I hope this makes sense. Uh, any questions, please post it down in the comment section. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.